Hello and welcome to the show. I am Puneet Vadhwa, and today we have with us Dan Feinman, co-head of APAC Equity Strategy at Credit Suisse. Dan spoke to us on the back of 25th Credit Suisse Asian Investment Conference. Welcome to the show, Dan. Thanks. Dan, you recently uh, downgraded India to underweight, uh, citing the rising oil prices. But don't you think Indian equities could be a contrarian bet from a medium term perspective, given all this pessimism? I don't think so. The two key issues are, number one, you have seen foreign investors selling, but it's from a very high level. And I think there's still a lot of foreign money in India. More importantly, contrary in bets work when valuations are cheap, but right now Indian stocks are still very expensive. The PE relative to the rest of the region is pretty much at an all-time high. Okay. So what are your return expectations from equities as an asset class in 2022? And what about the Indian markets per se? Mm. As a house, we have turned more cautious on global equities. We've gone from overweight to benchmark. Uh, reasons are the Ukraine situation, interest rates, wage pressures in developed markets. We aren't outright bearish, but we do think that this year will be a weaker year for global equities than, say, over the previous two years. Uh, as far as India is concerned, I think it'll be a clearly tougher year this year than last year. Last year, you had a lot of earnings upgrades that was that were powering the market. Valuations weren't as expensive, and you didn't have the downward pressure from oil prices. Okay, so in terms of, can you quantify the, uh, uh, the return that one is likely to get from equities as an asset class uh, globally and in India in 2022? Well, we don't have uh, targets that I, I could cite on that. Okay. Talking about uh, the foreign money, as you said, uh, foreign investors have been uh, dumping Indian stocks since October 2021, like there is no tomorrow. Uh, is the worst of the selling is over or they are just catching their breath before the selling resumes? I think that selling will probably remain a problem for India, as I noted. Uh, although foreigners have been selling, they started from a very high level of ownership. There's still quite a bit of money in India. And then there's the valuation issue. Uh, right now, Indian equities are the most expensive in Asia. Uh, if you're looking for bargains, India isn't the place. So which, which are the regions that are a bargain bet right now? Well, our favorite part of the region is ASEAN. Southeast Asia, markets like Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand. These markets are cheaper than India. They've got a good bounce back story from the pandemic. They aren't as, in some cases, as exposed to oil, say Malaysia and Indonesia are big commodities exporters. They aren't as sensitive to inflationary pressures. This is our, our favorite part of the region. China, we've also gone overweight. Uh, China has been sold off very heavily, but we're encouraged uh, that the government is providing better support for the economy. The valuations are appealing, uh, and, and we like that it's not as exposed to oil as some other markets in the region. Okay, so for 2022, would it be a safe bet to assume that uh, the net exporters of commodities would be a safer place to be? I think you need to have some positioning there as a hedge. It's very difficult to forecast where energy and commodities prices go because it's in part or large part a geopolitical issue and we've seen extraordinary volatility. I wouldn't place all your eggs in the commodities basket, but you should be, I think, overweight in commodities and energy because the prices are already high and there is certainly a risk that they could go higher. So the US Fed rate actually turned out to be some of a, something of a non-event for the equity markets, uh, including India. Are the global markets worrying too much about the global central bank action right now? 
Mm. Well, the Fed is still really the main story. The Fed is way ahead of other global central banks as far as tightening monetary policy. Uh, and it's probably going to remain uh, the, the most hawkish central bank going forward. So that's really, uh, that has to be the focus for most investors in Asia. Will rate hikes create another bond market scare, do you think? I wouldn't use the word scare, but we do think that there is uh, a likelihood that bond yields will continue going up. What is your view on global growth in the coming quarters? And do you think is India at a risk of a downgrade from the rating agencies in the backdrop of possible uh, worsening uh, macros given the oil prices where they are? And do you mm. think the markets are still oblivious to this? Mm. Well, our base case is that global growth is going to be staying roughly on track. Clearly, the Ukraine situation is going to be hurting growth in Europe. And there will be knock-on effects for other parts of the planet, either those that uh, those markets that are exposed to Europe, or markets uh, elsewhere that have high oil and energy import bills. But the U.S. is roughly net neutral in energy. Uh, household savings, both in the U.S. and Europe, are very high. Uh, consumers are sitting on a lot of dry powder, and we think the consumption will continue to tick along at a reduced pace. So we, we're not in the hard landing camp, uh, and, and we think that global growth will remain fairly healthy. As far as India and downgrade risk is concerned, I think a lot depends on the stance of the ratings agencies in general, whether they're going to be taking the view that higher oil prices are going to be persisting and that we need to be taking action against uh, countries with large oil import bills in general. I, I don't think that it will be an India specific decision. Okay, talking about the global markets uh, again then, um, given how the markets have actually bounced back from their recent close, are they fully uh, pricing in the worst as regards the Russia, Ukraine uh, geopolitical issue and its impact on commodities and especially oil is concerned? I think markets have fairly effectively discounted the situation as it stands now in the Ukraine. Uh, what hasn't been discounted is uh, a, a potential worsening of the situation and uh, another potential surge in oil prices. So I, I can't say that the situation is without risk. There's risk on both the upside and, and the downside, given the unpredictability of, of the situation. So what policy response do you expect from the Indian government in the backdrop of the current uh, global developments? And do you think uh, the foreign investors also feel that there is something lacking in the policy measures and hence the nervousness uh, besides the valuation uh, bit that you mentioned? Mm. Well, I, I think that the government and the central bank are in difficult positions. Uh, it would be hard, I think, to provide meaningful fiscal stimulus, given that uh, the fiscal situation is, I, I wouldn't describe it as, as difficult, but it, it's not flush. Uh, I think the job of the central bank is probably tougher now, given that you've got rising non-core inflationary pressures, but you have a risk of slower growth at, at the same time. Traditionally, the RBI will, you know, by its mandate, be looking at headline inflation. But when you have headline and growth and, and domestic demand potentially moving in different directions, that, that makes the situation difficult. Okay. So have you tweaked corporate earnings forecast for India Inc. for fiscal 22-23, that is FI-23 in the backdrop of uh, whatever is happening globally and in India? Well, let me comment on what the street is doing. We saw strong upgrades for Indian EPS through the first half of last year, started to cool in the third quarter. And since then, the EPS forecasts have been pretty flat, whether you're talking about in absolute terms or relative to the rest of the region. 
I, I think that on a longer term view, say on a three year view, there's the potential for upgrades if we can get past this difficult period of high oil prices. But in the near term, the very near term, there's probably downside rather than upside risk to EPS forecasts. So what, what's on your shopping list? Uh, or what are your overweight and underweight sectors as regards India? Mm. Well, at the moment, if you're talking fairly short term, where we've got all this uncertainty, uh, I would be looking more, uh, my, my favorite sector would be IT services. Uh, these software companies, not only are they insulated from oil prices in general, but they're actual beneficiaries of inflationary pressures. Uh, wage inflationary pressures in the U.S. makes these companies more competitive. So that, that would be my first stop in India at the moment. Hopefully, we get past this difficult period of oil price pressures, current account pressures. If we get back on track, then I'd be looking more at domestically oriented names like, like banks or infrastructure. Okay. To what extent the companies uh, will the companies be able to pass on this, uh, you know, hike in fuel prices and uh, oil prices to consumers, and how severely can it dent demand? Mm -hmm. Well, historically, Indian consumer companies have been able to pass on the cost uh, of higher inputs, uh, but typically the stocks will underperform not just in India, but regionally, these fast moving consumer goods companies, consumer companies in general will underperform when you get these sorts of inflationary pressures. Okay. So do you think that the sharp rise in commodity prices is actually uh, you know, a result, more a result of speculation rather than a demand supply uh, mismatch issue? There's a bit of both and there's you know an element of market dysfunctionality where markets have become overloaded by the volatility. But clearly, I mean, there's real supply issues here. Russia is the world's largest commodities producer and exporter, and taking it out of global markets is going to have a very real impact on commodity prices and commodity markets. So one last question. So what's your what's your advice to a retail investor right now? Uh, is it time to start buying or is the you know is more FI selling around the corner and they should wait on the sidelines before that abates? I think we sh if I were talking to a retail investor who's investing only in India and doesn't have options for other markets, probably a time to be a bit cautious. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much for your time today. We hope to see you soon. Thanks, Paneet. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.